This video is one of the four strategy videos we have about how to group missions. General Overview, Grouping Missions 1, Grouping Missions 2, and Grouping Missions 3. And we'll be using factors such as the point value of missions, the difficulty of missions, the distance, number of active attachments, and the general order of the rounds to determine how to group our missions. We will be using the 2014 to 2015 world class mat to do this, but all the, the strategies we've covered can be applied to this year's trash truck mat as well. Now we're going to go over a second way to group uh, the missions. So this way will be a little more advanced than the first way we did, involving more missions being done and more complicated attachments. So this is like the second tier um, level where you would earn more points but it would be more difficult to accomplish. So again, it's we follow the same strategy. Um, the only thing that's different is the amount of missions we want to attempt. Now keep in mind that the farther away a mission is, the harder it is because you need to go all the way there. So we kind of want to rule out all this big chunk here because they're way too far away. Some of them are pretty hard to do and we honestly don't have the time to go there. Right now that's our mindset. So we want to focus on the missions that we can do. And I'm just going to go ahead and circle like a hypothetical um, scenario about missions you would want to do first. Again, to find out what missions you can do or can't do, make sure to look at point value and difficulty. So let's say we can do uh, some of the, the missions that I'm circling. Um, again, notice that how they're relatively close to base and they aren't too difficult to accomplish. So let's say we can accomplish all the missions circled in green. So now we want to start, um, the first step we want to look at is distance, which I will use the blue color for. So distance is very important in grouping missions because you want to group a couple of missions in one round that are relatively close together. So right now off the bat, I'm just going to, you know, just purely on distance, I'm going to look at which rounds we have. So let's say this is our first round where we're going three, three missions just in a line. Just say that's one for now. Uh, let's say, okay, look, these three are relatively close together. Uh, we'll say that's two for now. And finally, we got these two missions pretty close together, and that's round three. So as of now, just based on distance, we have three rounds. So now let's uh, take a look at how many actives we have. Now remember, um, we have two extra motors outside of our two driving motors. So technically, I guess you could say we have two active attachments. So basically two uh, attachments that can require motors in one round because we want to have one round with one attachment. And that one attachment um, uses two active motions to complete missions. So based on the rule, let's take a look and evaluate our rounds if they're viable and um, are under the two active per round. So let's look. Uh, ch adapting and changing conditions, all we need to do is just push it. So we can just use that, uh, use a passive attachment, which means we require no extra motors, just the robot driving forward or something like that. For engagement, uh, they're spinning the wheel, which is passive, but there we also need to push down the yellow lever. So that might be an active. Finally, cloud access, we've got to insert a key inside, so we'll count that as an active. So now looking at this round, we have two actives, and that's good. That follows our two active per round limit. So now let's look at our second round that we have so far. Opening doors, as of now, we need to push down the lever and push open the door. So pushing down the little handle will probably most likely result in an active attachment. Um, Project-based learning, um, if we do have any loops, uh, I'm not sure we can pick some loop along the way, I guess like this one or something, then um, it's gonna require an active to place the loops on. And also there's loops in base as well. So that will probably require an active. And now let's look at search engine. So pushing, pushing the little you know button on the side will probably be a passive attachment because we just need to use a robot to push into it. 
but taking the ring out will uh, probably use an active. And here's where we come into some little um, difficulty where we have three actives in one round. And now we have two actives, and let's say our um, uh, the ideas that we have, we have to use an active for each. So we, don't, we have three actives in one round, and that's not okay. So we got to rethink our rounds again. Also, one thing to notice is that we need to push the button first and then pull the ring out. And the common strategy is that the robot goes out and pushes the button, and then we use the drivers at the base. They just uh, look at what color the wheel is, and then that way, the next round, we can just take out the ring. So it would, be, it would make sense to split this into two rounds now. So let's just uh, look at uh, if we have two rounds. So instead of doing that, then we just have this as round two. This is round three now, and this, we now have four rounds, just for now, okay? So the second round here, we're just going to do the um, doors, um, the project-based learning, and push the, push the little button on the side, and then we're just going to go back. For our third round, the robot's going to go out and take the ring. Simple active. And now this follows our two active limit um, per round. we got two actives, one active. That's good. Now let's look at the fourth round. Now the fourth round, uh, we got to go to a sports mission and go for robotics competition. So um, why don't we look? Sports, probably use an active to shoot the ball. Robotics competition, probably use an active to put the key in. Uh, you could use, consider using a passive to take out the hoop. So now we have two active in the fourth round, which is great for our two active per round limit. So now we have our four rounds based on distance and amount of actives we have per round. Okay, so now that we have our, um, our four rounds, let's look at ordering, like which round goes first, which round goes last, that kind of thing. So um, this is usually a flexibility, but one thing to notice is that the first, the first round and the last round are very special rounds, because in the first round, what happens is that you have plenty of time to set up your attachment. So in the first round, you have, you know, I think a, one and a half minutes to set up your attachment. So you have plenty of time to set up uh, attachment. So you can consider doing your uh, the round that involves the biggest attachment because then you just need to put it on and uh, just worry about, sorry, you just need to worry about taking it off and not worry about it putting it on. Also, the last round is special because let's say your last round, um, you go out to these missions here. Now you could just park your robot right here and you don't need to go back because because um, the last round you can stay anywhere on the field whereas if it were a round in between you would need to go back to complete more missions. So the last round generally very loosely you have it as your longest round because you just need to go out complete the missions and just stay right there. So now keeping this in mind and our four rounds, I'm just writing out again, one, two, three, and four. Well, four is the longest right now, so that's probably going to be last. And right where it is, we have it as our fourth round, so that's good. Last round. And uh, one more trick thing is that we need to push the button first. Remember, we need to push the button first and then take the ring out. So we need to do the second round before the third round. So right now, that's good. We have two before three. And the first round is just staying here. And our first round is actually the only round that has three round, three missions in it. We've got one, two, three. So it might make sense that it could be our most complicated attachment. And right there, we actually have our ordering. So we've got one, two, three, four. In that order, we can complete the missions. So Again, just to recap, first thing you want to do is to look at um, the missions. Then you want to look at distance, number of actives you have per round, and finally, the ordering. That's all for the video. Thanks for watching.